the most successful people on the BRW rich list, they're not property investors. They're property developers. They don't leave properties alone. They're not just going to advise and saying, what should I buy for positive cash flow? They're manufacturing properties. They're actually building into it. So that's that. Even if you just build one house, that's property development. This is Property Investory where we talk to successful property investors to find out more about their stories, mindset and strategies. I'm Tyrone Shum and in this episode on Property Investory, we continue the conversation with successful property developer Jason John Byron who will take us through his steps and fundamentals towards adding value in property and how you can create real wealth through property development. Also, before we delve into this episode, go over to propertyinveststory.com and subscribe to receive your free property investor case studies where you'll learn how to generate passive income from your properties. Go there now to sign up for free. So, what held Byron back from initially investing in property? I was quite a negative person back then. People that even knew me in business back then said that, you know, I was quite angry person I kind of thought that forcing things would get the stuff done and there was this whole thing of I had set beliefs and this is what you know, I mentor mentor thousands of, of people now and the main thing that I've got to get them through is that you've got to change your beliefs to get into property development because everyone gets you know going through life as they grow up and you'll either have a set belief that someone has that you're brought up with it might be, you know, your background or where you grew up, something like that, or else it might be something that you've adopted that you've heard out there. And my set belief was, hey, I finished high school. I was a cameraman. That's all I knew how to do. I had, a, obviously, you know, my HSC and I'd done that. But that's all. I didn't go to university. So what else could I do? I, I was going to be a cameraman for the rest of my life. And that was the set belief that I had back then. And then if it wasn't for me, I don't know, kind of seeing someone else do something in a similar situation where they didn't have a university education or something like that to fall back on and what did they do, um, then my belief wouldn't have changed. I would still be a cameraman now. Since then, he has conditioned his mindset to consider things in a more positive light with the help of one of his mentors. Because that's what I teach people now when I teach them about property development. The first thing I teach them is the mindset. Um, So it's really good that you touch on it because... I, I tell them first off, you, you've got to put down what your weaknesses are. And so that's really hard because you've got to go right down, okay, well, my, my weakness is, you know, my my budgeting, my weakness is I don't know enough about this, I don't know enough about that. And that's really hard to admit what you're not good at. Um, and then you put down what you're good at as well. But from that point on, I realised that my weakness was a negativity. I was very negative. I'd get into something and I'd start thinking, oh, no, I shouldn't be doing this. What am I doing? So I found a a mentor on the internet called Les Brown um, and he just said things in a way that made sense that it would reprogram my my mind to say, no, it is possible. And and anyone that listens to him knows that you listen to enough of Les Brown, he kind of instills this faith in you that says, no, keep going forward. Don't stop. It'll, It'll come. Just just don't go back to the negative. <laughs> so um, listen to him a lot when I first started because I was having the education that was working but listen to him every single morning. Um, I know you listen to a lot of podcasts and that, so that's what I was doing, listening to him on YouTube. And then I wrote down my weaknesses and then made a plan to tackle those weaknesses. So, And that's very much what it was. It was a plan. Okay, who do I need? What do I need to do? And then this week I'm going to be doing – these things to get better at that particular issue that I had to get better at, I suppose. With a background in media, Byron found it natural to become attuned to negativity. However, ultimately, he discovered that he needed to make the change to his mindset in order to succeed. I was in media for 20 years and I've been media trained and I've been with reporters and done television shows and done a lot of news and that. And the first rule of media is bad news is good news. Good, good, good news is not good. So you, you look for fear and things that 
a negative because that gives people a chance to complain about them. No one's going to complain about someone that did something good. Um, so, I mean, it's just a natural way that we're kind of programmed. It's easy just to sit back and accept things and, and complain about them over and over again and a- analyze problems. Oh, this problem is this, this guy did this, this guy did that, but not come up with solutions. You know, that's how the world is. It's 90% problems and 10% solutions, unfortunately. Um, that set belief, though, you know, you would have gone through that too, right? Where, you, you know, you, you're growing up with this thing and it's what people don't realize is you just change that belief and you can believe something else. And I think it's, it's I think it's, there's a big, uh, I suppose the world's, it's not, there's not total equality out there in the world. We're still at a point where people are told that you can't do this and you can't do that, even when it comes to, you know, what we're recently on about, you know, marriage and that type of stuff. And there's all these rules, you can't do this and you can't do this and you can't do that. And so all these things happen that keep coming up for people where they're told they can't do things. And that's a belief. And then people just don't do it. Women are told you have to marry a rich man. You know, and that's just the most craziest thing. Um, or you know, and it's just a culture thing that comes into it too. And that just stops you making decisions um, to change things. And you just go with the pack. And so that's where I had to do it to say, hang on a second, I'm just being negative for the sake of being negative. You know, I've got to be look at everything from a positive angle. And instead of me saying I can't find a property, I've got to say I haven't found one that's stacked up for me to be able to progress forward to the next level, but I'm going to keep looking. I know it's out there. The best advice he has ever received has allowed him to adapt his goals according to what he has already achieved. I think it just comes back to doing what I'm doing now with with development. If you suddenly get better at something, then you need to scale up. You don't. Uh, you, if you underestimate your talents, I had um, someone tell me once outside a conference to look at Amy and myself and say. What are you guys doing? You're, you're fantastic at doing this. You've already done, you know, one house, two houses, three houses. Like, why not go into doing, moving up to development? What's stopping you? And I suppose it was a fear and an uncertainty and thinking that you need all this money and you really need no money for development because that's is what investors want. They want a brand new product where you just knock down the land and build something brand new and have a 20% margin. And that, that's easier to find a JV partner for that than it is to do any other type of technique. So we were just kind of using that as an excuse that you need lots of money when it's the total opposite. <laughs> so that's the best time. That's, that's the best advice I've been given. You know, don't underestimate your talent now. You've got to this stage. What are you, what are you holding back for? When thinking about trying property development, everyone has to start somewhere. Byron says it's easy to break the process down into manageable steps. I use things called proven track record when I teach people about stuff. And I say, you've just got to look out for people out there that are, are doing whatever technique that you're interested in and try to find the best person that's doing it. And so, you know, go right to the top. So I went to Merit and had a look at how they did it and, and Mervate. Like, I don't want to be building that type of stuff that they built, but it doesn't matter. I've got to look at, well, what techniques and stuff are they using to be able to do what they do and then break it right down to someone that's just done a duplex or a four or a fourplex or something like that. Um, but the, you look high at the biggest achievement and then go go down. And then when I looked at it, I said, okay, well, these guys have systemized it. So they have they they run it like a business where it, it, it's a system that, that you've got to go through. And so that's the same thing that I do now. I look at it and go, okay, um, you know, ha- ha- let's break this down. It can't be that complicated. If if they started from the same place I did, which is the same as Harry Triggerboff, then you know, surely what am I? What, what's my fear? Everyone started from from somewhere, but our fear is when we look at the big picture and don't break it down into, well, what was the process that got them there? On learning more about how to succeed in property development. Byron says that it's about implementing an effective method across the board in order to guarantee investors of your feasibility. There's this defining line and that's property investor or property developer. And so the most successful people on the BRW rich list, they're not property investors. They're property developers. They don't leave properties alone. They're not just going to advise and saying, what should I buy for positive cash flow? They're manufacturing properties. We're actually building into it. So that's that. even if you just build one house, that's property development. So I think you need to change your mindset from am I an investor or 
Do I want to develop properties? Do I want to do stuff to them to add value to them? That's what investors want. They want to see that if, if someone's going to JV with me and they want to go into a deal with me, they want to see that I've already got some way of being able to buy it for a certain price and add value to it. So at the end of the day, the value of the product is actually more. More than just a, uh, a kind of a situation where even with renovations, I find it's very hard to get a, to give that investor an assurance. And so when we looked at JVs, we had to break down our whole system for them and showed them who was the people behind us, what was in our analysis, what was our comparables to show that this area would actually work that we're, that we're going to go into. Um, and we kind of brand ourselves in a way to say, well, this is who we are and these are, this is our crew, this is people we use, this is our feasibility. Um, we always do an information memorandum, which is a document that just breaks all that down for them. Um, and that's what an investor wants to see. Then, you know, it's, it's really not about you. It's about, well, what can you present to them? You've got to prove yourself in this world. Um, I think a lot of people kind of just wait for that investor to come along, that JV partner with all the money, then try and find the deal. Well, it just doesn't work. You need to find the deal and back yourself up, mm. almost like a, a business plan. Yeah, like a business then, proposal to the bank kind of thing. Mm, Very much so. Exactly the same. And that's been our success. Every single year for the last nine years, we've been in a JV. Wow. And that's what's got us to where we are today. That's where we were able to retire and just do property almost like as a hobby <laughs> because it wasn't our B end, end or if we stopped doing this, we wouldn't have any cash flow to live. Like we've got property investments that we've developed now that are fine that are going to be there for as long as we keep them and they're chugging along good. But every time when we started to be able to do joint ventures, every year we knew that we had a property we're doing on the, for ourselves, and at the same time we're going to do something, manufacture growth out of that property, split that with the joint venture partner. So that means that every year I'm guaranteeing of having cash flow as a chunk as well. Mm. Um, and then we get up to stage, you know, we can do three, five investors at once because if we systemize it, and this is what people need to start thinking about, I mean, what's the most successful restaurant franchise in the world? Probably McDonald's. McDonald's, right. Yeah. Does McDonald's have a system? Yes. I mean, everyone knows that. And does McDonald's do – you, do you look at McDonald's and think that they lose money? No, definitely not. It's, it's, you wouldn't mind being left at McDonald's tomorrow, right? Yeah, of course. But what if I said I'm going to leave you a fish and chip shop? There's no guarantee. You know, mm. You'd be a little bit worried. You'd be like, I don't want the hassle. But the reason why people – why McDonald's just works – is because it has a need, and this is exactly what property development, I break it down to people very simply. The need in McDonald's is yummy burgers, fast food, in convenient locations. The system is the actual McDonald's franchise, what they've set up. They've copied it and gone out. And the process is using that system to make the burger. I don't do anything different from McDonald's. Neither does Harry Triggerboff, neither does Gina Reinhardt, neither does the Pratt guys with, with Busy Recycling. They all have a need. So my need is people want affordable, classy, brand new, you know, uh, dwellings that are close to amenities and um, and convenience, and that's the townhouses or units. So they'll always need that. So I've just got to find out where do they need it the most. Coming up after the break, we'll find out what Byron's own system is within his own business. So then the system turns into a process and the process ends up building a finished product. Um, and that's what I think people people need to understand. As a property developer, you are the same as the most successful companies in the world and that's why they're successful. The personal habit which has contributed to his success in property development. Our annual priorities say that we want to get this many developments happening this year and then we break it down into quarterly goals, um, into monthly goals, weekly goals and epochs weekly uh, epochs and that's next i'm tyron shum and you're listening to property invest story hey podcast listeners are you enjoying listening to these stories and want more then head over to propertyinvestory.com and subscribe to receive your free property case studies that i only send exclusively via email just one of the many benefits of being part of this community 
These real case studies are from experienced property investors where they share specific numbers of their portfolio, their strategies and much more. Simply visit propertyinvestory.com to get your free case studies. Now back to the show. So what is Byron's system that he utilizes in his own business? My system is something that I teach people now which is really the true part of our success which is it, we, we break development down into 12 stages and we, we almost like I told you about the epochs, right? So if I'm up to stage four in our development, then I know I've, I've got that system up to stage four, then I can start another development and go back to system one and keep it going. So then the system turns into a process and the process ends up building a finished product. Um, and that's what I think people, people need to understand as a property developer, you are the same as the most successful companies in the world and that's why they're successful you know gina reinhardt has mining she's got to produce iron ore the system is her mining company the process is putting out the iron ore busy is recycling boxes now it's 10 times the demand of the boxes because we buy a ring over the internet but he has a system and the process is recycling the old stuff into the new stuff but can he repeat that and can you scale that yeah, you can. Every company, you got to get to a point now where, as a property developer, I have a system that other people work in and I produce money. The same thing that the richest people in the world have, or the richest, the wealthiest, I don't know what you want to call them, most successful people, right? They have systems where other people work in their system. So you've got to figure out, are you working in someone else's system to make their money? <laughs> Which, if you think about it, sometimes your job is that you're working in someone else's system, and you figure, hang on, how I, how come I'm not getting forward? But the smartest people have developed the system like I have, where I get seventy five percent of the work is done by people working in my system. I do twenty five percent of it, but I have that system, and I know how to run that system and the processes that all those team of people have to go together to produce my product at the end of the day, which is always in need. And it's a lot easier to produce a product that people need than something that you've got to try to put out there and hope that someone will will, will buy or, you know, and that's, that's why I love doing what I do. Setting goals is something that has become an ingrained personal habit for Byron, which in turn has aided him on his route to success. The habit is very much uh, goes in making a yearly goal so our annual priorities say that we want to get this many developments happening this year and then we break it down into quarterly goals and into monthly goals weekly goals and epochs weekly epochs to to kind of go through what what uh, an epoch is and in what week are we up to within the 52 weeks of the year so the, a lot of planning is behind it and then but then we, we use our system behind us to know exactly what stages have to happen within that stage and what the person that's doing the construction has to be up to at that certain stage as well. So if I'm following that system the whole time, um, then I, I actually feel a lot more confident that even if I've got issues, I know how to solve them because I'm, I, I know what, what's happening next and you, know, I kind of, you kind of work backwards. So, you know, that's our monthly program. And then I can, I can go and have holidays because I get to a stage that I can, I can get someone else to follow that system. It's not all in my head. Um, and that's what we've done now. We've employed people that do the minor work and we're just the big thinkers of doing acquisitions and that type of stuff. Considering future prospects in terms of investing and developing, he utilizes fundamentals which help him identify the right property in the right area then also create a product that is in demand. I mean, I've got developments within 6Ks of all the um, of all the capital cities is where I look at. So that's where I find the highest demand for my product. That's what I like. Um, where we're developing at the moment, I came up to Brisbane four years ago because my parents were getting close to in you know, a very old age. And so I said, um, within one week, we left our place in Sydney, pa- um, packed our clothes, left all our furniture in our house, Moved up here and started doing property development straight away, um, because you had we had that luxury of being able to do that, and we had JV partners that would finance a ring for us. 
Um, so we ended up in Brisbane because my parents were up here. And I said to Amy, um, you know, we're married now, but I don't really know my parents enough. And I haven't spent that much time with them because they moved up when I was 18 up to Queensland. So I didn't properly see them for a good 10, 15 years. So I said, I don't want to lose that part of my life with them. So she said, even though we're doing stuff in the city and developing, I said, we're going to come up here. Now, the cool thing about property development, what I teach is I teach this target strategy, which is it's it's a certain thing so that I can tell you exactly where to find that property. So the biggest thing people go is, oh, I can't find a property, I can't find a deal. Well, with property development, it works backwards. You can use targeting to target exactly where it's going to work. So you can give me any state and I can tell you exactly where to go to build that townhouse or that unit development that will work. And I purely go back to my demand. People want convenience. People want um, to be in an area that they can get to access to work, you know, within a decent time frame. They want access to fast food. They want access to infrastructure. They want access to cafes and entertainment. Um, and so that's where we kind of do this big analysis. I teach people how to do it and then we nail down and we go, okay, that's where you're going to do it. Don't do it there or there or there. Do it right there. So, I mean, I teach people all around Australia how to do it and it works over and over again. And that's what the smart developers know. Um, even the big guys, you look at them, they'll always be close to certain points of infrastructure or cafes or districts um, that service the need of the people that want to be there so the product eventually, you know, you're going to sell it <laughs> because you're servicing that need in that area. Um, now, when it comes to media, the biggest problem people do is they read magazines and they trust what they say. Now, getting back to my history in the media, it's very easy for, I'm not saying this is always the case, but you've got to think about this. It's very easy to get facts and write factual stories, but they might not be the actual story behind it. They're just a factual story. It's very different. So I can tell you a, a factual story now is that I knew it. Here's an area here where it's had 25% growth in one year. You know, surely that means that you should be going into this area, right? The only thing that happened there was rezoned. Oh, okay, that changes things. But so, what's the story behind it? Do you know what I mean? So this is the whole thing. So this, when you become smarter, is when you stop listening to everyone out there, or you take hints about certain things, but then you go back and use fundamentals, which is what we teach, and go, hang in a second, let's just look at what areas do people need to be in first. And that's, I mean, we're developing that's really easy because you're actually just creating the product that, that they're actually demanding the whole time. Byron also explains that as a developer, there are needs as a service provider to create a growth corridor in a certain area. The biggest tip I can give for property developers, it, it, our job is so much easier if we're doing property development than anyone else's because we have all these grants that happen for brand new properties and we have the natural influence of people being able to borrow more for a brand new property or, or get a higher yield for a brand new property. But then we have these things that the government do called growth corridors. And you can Google them in every single state and I'll show you where those growth corridors are. And that's where the government and the council say, property developers, we actually need you. We would like to help you. Because you think about it, no matter where you live, you'll know a growth corridor around you. That's where the government says we're going to spend all the money on the infrastructure. That's where that area is going to become beautiful, you know, beautiful, because we're going to spend all our money on there because we want a growth corridor. Now, a growth corridor means high density, right? That's what growth is. What do we build? Medium to high density products. So they want us there because they want that area to have more people in it. And they will support it 100, 200%. But guess what? The government and the councils can't do it. They don't build high rises and townhouses or, or units. So they actually need you. This is what the best thing. I can sit down with the council and go, where do you want me to go and where are, we, where are you going to help me? No, like, oh, can you go here? Because we need this density here to be double. And the only way I can double the density is to do more on the block of land, right? So that's where it's going to get rezoned. So, if Byron were to meet his past self from 10 years ago, what would he say? 
I think I'd say don't be afraid to to go and you know look, do some education. I think that would be the biggest thing. To just because you didn't go to university or just because you didn't know exactly what you wanted to do in in life, the more you try different things out that you're interested in, from an educational point of view, it'll come to you. All my friends went to university, and none of them are doing what they did in the, the degrees from university. Um, and and what they eventually got to is that they they use university as you know an education platform to go. Actually, this is what I thought I was going to do, but actually I heard about this and I want to do this now. So you know, just do. There's plenty of short courses and this and that. So go and just go and explore it. How do people make money? And you know, I don't care what industry it's in, but you have to go along and spend some time on yourself. And say, even if it's going to cost you money, you know, if you're spending it on yourself, there's no problem. And I don't mean buying clothes and everything like that. I mean spending it on your brain. You're going to spend – how much money do people spend in university? You know, sometimes up to $60,000, yet they're scared to go and spend 2000 3000 on some education. There, even if you just pick up one point out of it. And I'm saying don't go on the Spruikers one where they just try to sell your properties and stuff, stuff like that because – if it's just sell property and there's no education, that's when you should be leaving those seminars straight away or asking for your money back. But if you can walk and, and they'll all give you your money back. Most of the good ones out there, if you're not happy with it, they'll give you money back straight away. So what's stopping you from doing it? If you wish to connect with Byron or attend one of his seminars, you can reach out to him via social media. I think the brilliant and the easiest way is just Jason John Byron on Facebook. I mean, just become my friend on there and see what I do and I share stuff on there and I don't, you know, but that social media has been a great board for me to do that. If you're really interested, if you're interested in property development, we call ourselves property developer success. So that's exactly what we lead from success, right? So um, we just, you know, www.propertydevelopersuccess.com.au and you'll find some information there and, um, and yeah, I mean, anyone can ever ask me any questions or anything like that. I'm, I'm happy to give them some direction. Thank you to Jason John Byron, our guest on this episode of Property Investory. If you want to hear more about his journey, then visit our website at propertyinvestory.com. Simply type in the search bar, Jason John Byron and select that episode to learn more about his story. Also, if you haven't subscribed to receive your free property case studies, that I only send exclusively via email, you can text me your email address to 0499881040 to subscribe. These real case studies are from experienced property investors where they share specific numbers of their portfolio, the strategies and much more. Simply text me your email address to 0499881040 to get your free case studies. Thanks for listening.